It has been a few months since we last heard from former White House National Economic Council Director Brian Deese, but he is joining us this morning in his first post-administration interview to share his thoughts on what's happening with the debt ceiling, the Fed, the banking crisis, and more. And Brian, thanks. It's great to see you in the studio. It's great to see you both. Okay, let's talk about what ha what's happening with the debt ceiling, because this is weird. It's getting into some uncharted territory, it feels like. Um, we are getting very close to the X date. You think we'll have a deal? Do you think we will have it before the X date? Look, we are in uncharted territory, and it is weird and unfortunate. Uh, I think that the news that came out from Fitch overnight, I hope, um, will be a wake-up call for everybody involved here, that this is getting real and can get really real, and the impacts can get very significant very quickly. Uh, and so uh, I hope that what we will see is that this kind of sign will jolt everybody at the negotiating table to say, you know what? that I, the sort of holding on to those last set of ideological demands is not worth uh, the harm that we're going to inflict on the American economy here. This is all macroeconomic downside here. This is all an a unnecessary and an unintended uh, uh, you know, uh, risk factor to the economy. The sooner we take it off the table, the better. Um, I hope uh, that we will uh, see a reasonable and rational agreement here. And I hope that the political system will actually be able to move it through before the X date. Uh, but given the circumstances we have today, the risk that we, uh, that we trip that in the other direction is higher than it's ever been. What, what's weird about this is the market, at least the equities market, stock market, doesn't seem to be too worried at all. You do see some activity in short-term Treasury bills. Um, that's where you've seen much higher yields. But other than that, people kind of think that this will get done because it has to get done. Without having that pressure from a stock market kind of drop, maybe, maybe it doesn't put that pressure on them. Look, I think what we've seen in prior crises is people are calm and confident until they're not. And the risk of pushing up to or beyond that point becomes compounded uh, if people really, if people's expectations are, are dashed. The second thing is this, this brinksmanship, this, this, this experiment in, in risk here can have longer lasting impacts, negative impacts. And what, this is why I say there's, it's all what would macroeconomic happen? downside play, play here. Play it out in the macroeconomic. Well, so, so, I mean, uh, we saw in 2011 when we, when, our, when we got downgraded as a nation. It takes years to come back from that kind of thing. So uh, even if they're able to go up to or close to the X date and resolve this, doing it at the last minute has consequences, economic consequences. The risk of uh, putting upward pressure on our borrowing rates because we lose our AAA status would far swamp any impact uh, that this deal would have economically. And so it's all negative. It's all downside. And so the sooner that we eliminate that risk, uh, the better. But, you know, we don't want to, there's a lot of conversation about what happens the day or two or three after the X date. And there's lots of planning going on on that uh, front. But Meaning what? Prioritization of spending, which bills we pay, which bills we don't? But what we can do given the systems that we have. Um, but uh, all, I, all I can say is that while there is prudent planning going on, there is no prudent plan that can evolve the chaos and confusion. And once we go past that, we will do damage that will be very hard to repair, would take years to do. And all of that is economic cost with no, you know, with, with no attendant benefits. So the sooner we get this out of our way, the better. Look, it's a big game of chicken, though. If you listen to the Republicans on this, they'll say, we have a bill. We've passed a bill in the House. If you want them to not default, take it. Take it and do something with it. We've been trying to talk for months and months. It's only been very recent that the negotiations are there. It takes both sides to come to the table and say, okay, here's where we're going to give. Why have we not been able to find some common ground around that? Well, look, I'd say a couple of things. The first is I, I think that there is, has been and continues to be a common ground that can be found around the budget and budget levels. And in fact, that's how budget agreements happen consistently. Sure. Um, and I've been involved in debt ceiling increases uh, in the past. and. If you look back in 2013, 2015, other times, you, you have a rational agreement around budget levels, and that's how you get things done. I think that what's different and what is particularly dangerous in this context is this close to the line, having anybody, and in this case, we are seeing this out of Republican leadership, basically say, it's not our obligation, it's not our responsibility to increase the debt limit. That is on the other side. That's an incredibly dangerous dynamic. Uh, d dangerous to the economy because if the debt limit is not understood as a shared responsibility and a core congressional priority, then the risk that we end up 
making an incredibly damaging error, either now or at some point down the road, goes up. And the markets are going to, the markets are going to internalize that risk.